One thing that I struggle the most with is boredom. It's like trying to escape this feeling either in my phone or my thoughts. And while dopamine detoxing is a thing and is quite popular on the internet, I just experimented with a better solution. Something that allows us to use the tech we love, but at the same time not letting the tech use us. All by changing my relationship to the feeling of boredom itself. And to illustrate the difference between my approach and standard advice, let me tell the story of John and George. Let's say there are two equally skilled people named John and George. Both of them are not addicted to social media, games, and YouTube anymore, but they went about it in different ways. John followed the popular advice brought by books like Digital Minimalism and Dopamination, cutting out everything. He used various website blockers and after various relapses and panic attacks, he was finally able to quit all of these. But he's still very scared of falling back into the ditch again and tries to avoid all scrolling as much as possible. George, on the other hand, realized from the very beginning that maybe it's not technology's fault after all. Even Blaise Pascal realized almost 400 years ago that we are unable to simply do nothing. George also came across a famous study where 67% of the male participants and 25% of the female participants preferred to shock themselves instead of being in a room left alone. So George went out, sat in a chair alone and waited to see what happened. And as expected, he started to feel queasy, tensing up and wondering what he was doing with his life. He began to have thoughts about wasting time, losing control and, and various painful memories from his childhood started to beat him up again, as if they had not left the school. But it also felt lighter. It was almost like snow was melting, revealing the dusty ground that has always been there. He realized that by excessively consuming all these dopamine hits every day, he just added more and more snow without fixing the core problem. Now George started to almost lose control, shaking his hands and feet, uttering nonsensical words. It felt like he was going to collapse at any point now. But just as he almost ran to the door, he remembered the passage from the bestseller The Power Now. In the prologue, author Eckhart Tolle regards his own experience one night when everything went crashing down. At that time, Eckhart heard the voice, resist nothing, and decided to completely let go, accept what happened until he could control it, ultimately freeing him from all anxiety still to this day. So George tried to not control what he felt anymore. He didn't no longer fight this urge that now was consuming every cell of his body. He was going to befriend this boredom, seeing it as the goal of his life. Then all tensions and horrible memories quickly vanished and everything became silent. Nothing was happening, just George and the wall. He had never seen how peaceful this wall was before and became flooded with a tremendous sense of relief and joy. For five hours straight, he just sat there admiring everything as it was without need to change anything. Then when he went back to social media, games and YouTube, he realized he did not need them as much anymore. They were just equally exciting as his plant or his dynamic candlelight. Sure, they provided a lot more information which George happily watched through, but he could close YouTube whenever he wanted to focus either on his work or on his meal. Now let's see how John and George do today when they are working. As for John, he's not satisfied where he's at right now. Although he doesn't play games anymore, he often finds himself procrastinating with email, administrative tasks, or even tries to build up a very fancy productivity system. John is not aware of the boredom feeling itself and cannot understand why the gods seem to prevent him all the time from doing his most valuable work. Since he no longer can scroll, he finds himself overthinking a ton, imagining all possible scenarios, chasing ideas and insights, all by tensing up on his sofa, of course. As for George, it's the complete opposite. He just sits there, either typing really fast or looks pretty amazed at how beautiful his computer is. All by being completely relaxed, of course. George also takes time for email, administrative tasks and has a very simple productivity system that fits his needs, but does not use them to hide from everything since boredom is now his friend. He finds himself becoming better and better at what he does, being more courageous and comfortable with failure and sees results compounding already right now. But he does not need these results since he's perfectly happy where it is right now and does have the patience to have massive long-term success and fulfillment. 
Now, obviously, John and George are fictional characters, but maybe you can relate yourself and how they felt. Personally, I believe I acted like John from three years ago when I learned about productivity all the way to very recently, maybe two weeks ago. But then I went through a similar transformation as George did and still do from time to time. Befriending boredom has given me a peace of mind I've never seen before. But we're extremely far from perfect and probably have a long way to go, but I'm feeling good already now. So how can we be more like George and not like John? And again, from a metaphorical standpoint, watch the snow and let it melt. Do nothing and see what comes up below your thoughts and activities. Then accept and like whatever has been hiding before the whole time, whether it is from childhood or recent breakup. Once you do that, your preferences is perfectly in sync with reality and you get peace of mind automatically since it's a ratio between you and the world. Not a destination with perfect conditions, just a ratio. Actually, maybe boredom does not exist after all. Maybe it's just a term for all the dust we've accumulated we're afraid to deal with but will not go away. And once we accept it, this urge is now drive towards what we want, being whole and fast. And whether this is true or not, I think it's extremely empowering to know that we are more in control than we realize, all by inhabiting all of ourselves as we were one. And we just got bored of me saying that once again, I believe you're on the right track.